Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing really well. Today we've got a brand new car on the channel. We're going to be showcasing the assisted driving technology that is in the brand new Audi e-tron. Now I've been using this for the past few days and I've got to say I am insanely impressed with it and I want to show you guys what it's all about and how it differs from what I'm used to which is of course autopilot. Now from the get-go this is definitely an assistant. This is not a pilot. It will not let you kind of relax. Obviously you're not meant to take your hands off the wheel but you have to keep your hands on the wheel and guide it at all times now that's not to say that it won't guide itself it actually does guide itself and i've just hit a pigeon <laughs> oh my god a pigeon just flew into the side of the car i hope that got caught on camera it literally oh wow okay i'm really distracted now but anyway back onto this so you can see up ahead we've got this display here now i'm actually putting no pressure on the steering wheel so when i put no pressure on the steering wheel you'll see it likes to hug the line but it is actually driving itself now. On the top left, we should have, there you go. See that little hand icon? That's because my hands are off the wheel or at least not applying enough pressure. And if I apply pressure, you can see it goes back on. This is gonna be a perfect place to demonstrate what I mean. So around here, it would actually drive itself. So it would navigate itself around this car. It's doing it all by itself, by the way, at the moment. And you can see around this corner here, it does navigate itself around the corner. Now, you know my hands on on the wheel because we've got that yellow warning at the top. And I just wanted to show it can clearly autopilot around. I shouldn't say that word when I'm trying other cars. Uh, it clearly can steer around corners and follow lanes by itself. We did get a little warning there. So again, I'm going to take my hands off the wheel now and I'm just going to allow it to just navigate this slight bend. But what you can see is that it doesn't quite stay in the middle. It more kind of bounces from left to right. But I think that's because it's an assistant and it's not trying to pilot down the middle. Again, it's asking me to take it over control. So I'm going to put my hands on the steering wheel. And with a little bit of force, there you go, the sign disappears. But you can see from this, it actually navigates pretty well. Again, my hands are off the wheel and it should turn here. Yeah, it's turning and it should turn us back into lane. And there, it's, it's working really well. So it definitely can navigate all of this without the need of me. Now, this is another really good test coming up. We've got cyclists. Let's see what it thinks of the cyclists. So we're coming into a 70 now. You can see that it's slowing down. So I'm going to indicate to go around the cyclist. And now we're starting to speed up again. Now, what you can see is this is all gone kind of gray and white. That means that it can't see the lanes. So you've got to make sure that everything is green when you're doing it. Otherwise, like there, it won't do anything and you will just be in full control yourselves. And that's what I mean by an assistant. You have to keep your hands on and be controlling it at all times because if you don't, it will just go kind of straight and you will end up crashing into something. So it's definitely not a piloting system. But as you can see here, we we can set the distance so I can set the distance to typical Audi driver like that or we can try something new and go all the way down here and this is based off of seconds so each one of these is a second so you can see that I'm there uh, five seconds behind the car in front and then that's four and then that's three that's two and that's one so let's put it at one and let's see how close we get into this Hyundai in front of us but you can see here, it's telling us that it can see the right-hand line and it can see the left-hand line. And we're going on to quite a wide stretch of road now. So we're going to see if maybe the left hand does disappear. So I'm going to take my hands slightly off the wheel now. And you can see that it diverted very quickly to the right, now back over to the left. So it instantly there, it diverted to the right, went to the left. But because of the width of the road, you can see that it currently can't see any lines. So right now, I am the only thing in control. But if I just slightly go into the middle of the road here, it might start picking up the right-hand line. Let's see when it starts picking it up. There we go. So we have to be kind of over to the right a bit, but I think because of the width of the road, it got a little bit confused. Now, what I have found that this system does way better than any other system, like hands down, is regulating speed. So again, I'm going to uh, put my distance further away from the car in front. And you can see we get this red marker showing us exactly how far it wants to be away from the car. And as it lets the car in front go further, that red line disappears and we get slightly further back really cool system and it works really really well and what I've also found is that it has corner assist 
it has city assists, and it has roundabout assists. So what we're going to be doing now is coming up to roundabout. I'm going to set that back to three. You can see we're accelerating quite heavily there to get back uh, up into this Hyundai. And we're going to be coming to a roundabout in a minute. And what it does is it slows the car down before the roundabout and allows you to go around the roundabout at a slow speed, and then it will accelerate after the roundabout again. It's a really good system. It works really well, and I wish other systems had something as good as this. And then it also does it to tight corners. So if you get to a very tight corner, it will slow itself down. It can see ahead and it knows. So I'm gonna take my hands completely off the wheel now and just allow you to see, look, hands are over here. Just allow you to see that the car will navigate itself around a bend like this and keep in lane with no problems. Even without an, an actual left line, it still works really, really well. I'm just really gently touching the wheel now just to see what happens if I ignore it enough. Oh, okay, apparently that's hard enough. You really just touch the wheel so gently and then it will guide you around the corners. So this is a really good system and it does mean that you keep your hands on the wheel more in turn of uh, kind of taking them off for like 20 seconds then just putting them on for a second and taking them off. So here we come up to this roundabout and you will see in a second uh, that the roundabout it comes up on the screen and starts to tell us basically that we're gonna be slowing down. There we go, so we get this little roundabout sign here. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be going straight across the roundabout, but I've got to stop obviously because there's a car coming round and it, it can't see to the right or to the left and it won't like stop you or slow you down for other people oncoming, just for the traffic that's in front of you. So to turn the system back on, it's just one flick of the stick on the bottom left, which is quite intuitive and kind of what we're used to as well. And again here, you can see that we're just gonna be following this car in front of us with no problem. So let's, uh, I'm gonna see, yeah, so we've got a system on. I'm gonna take my hands off the wheel and look at how well it guides us around. And there we go. And it actually lost it there. So luckily enough, I obviously was covering the wheel, but you can see there that it does, it, it does turn off sometimes at some weird points but it's obviously very, very good. Now you can turn this whole system off really easily um, by, by flicking the, the stalk again, uh, but obviously I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep it on, so we're just gonna keep it on. But if I turn it off, it just goes like that, and you instead now don't have this distance warning in front of you, so it just kind of turns itself off, and then you can turn it back on, and it works again really, really well. So I'm gonna let it go around here by itself, this is it steering all by itself over this little hill, and I assume it's gonna lose the lines here, but it doesn't, and it's still turning for me. Again, it's doing all of this on its own, everybody. I want that little symbol to come up. There you go, just so you can see that I'm definitely not interfering with this, but I am ready at all times. Look at that. Does it really, really nicely, and gets us back into the middle of the lane there. So you can see there, it kind of, it does kind of sway you a little bit left and right, but it may be because the car in front is so far over to the left, but it does keep you quite nice and central in lane. And there you go, again, it, it tells you to uh, take back control uh, when, it, when it wants you to. So it is pretty good at letting you know, but I've not found any audible cues yet. So here we go, the lines are gonna disappear. Let's see if it turns off. Yep, it turns off there. Now that's where, again, it's not quite as advanced as a piloted system, and it is very much just that assisted system. Now you can also change it so that you don't have quite as much help or you have more help. So there are good settings and you can kind of adjust it to whatever you feel comfortable with. Again, going around these corners, no problem. Even with a left line, nah, there you go. So with a left line disappearing, I'm having to steer it. Otherwise, it doesn't seem to be steering quite as much. I'm just gonna let go. Yeah, you see? As soon as I let go, the wheel flicks back into central point. That's because it's not seeing that left line. So, yeah, and now it's gonna be controlling itself. And it has actually reacted quite quickly on several occasions, which is really good. So it does do some pretty abrupt turns if you need it to, uh, and it does it with really good confidence. I'm actually gonna hopefully overtake these people because it's a little bit slow. I'm gonna turn on the boost mode. So you see the boost gauge there turn on for a little bit. And as long as there's no one coming on the other side of the road, do a little bit more speed. So these are pretty good corners. You can see now we've got this warning come up. So it can tell us right here that it's gonna slow itself down for these corners. Aha, there you go. So that's its limitation. So you see there it says, please take control of the vehicle. That's because my hands were off 
the corner was a little bit too tight for it and we were going uh, obviously yeah a little bit too high a speed for the corner for its liking so it told us to take control again you can see it's drifting now to the right hand side so it does like to keep pretty close here we've got some pretty insane corners coming up and i'm going to let it do it all itself what's it going to do it follows the corner really nicely and you can see my hands are very very lightly touching the wheel but it's turned really well there and it's kept us in lane very nicely and it's still doing it even though we've got this warning up it's still doing it and it's done that really really well it's going a little bit too far to the left for my liking there and now it seems to have lost the lines so I'll just straighten it back up which was strange it got us straight and then it turned off and it's still turned off for some reason and now it's back on but you did see there it did slow us down to 50 miles an hour which is the correct speed limit and it has very good speed limit awareness and I've never so here look at that that was a good turn from it so there you could see that it turned and got us back into the lane and it took good control when it needed to okay so we've got uh, this lorry in front of us is actually turning left so we're just going to be coming behind it here and then we're just going to show ah very interesting so the car has just actually forced us to the left because it saw this biker so it saw this biker coming it forced us over to the left to allow it to pass so there we go the lorry's out of our lane and it's going to accelerate us back up to the speed limit again there's no left line as you can see my hands aren't on the wheel but it is still steering us around this corner really nicely so as we come into this 60 now, it tells us right there that it's a 60, it can see it. And again, it's doing this corner by itself. And I'm literally, my, my fingers and thumbs are just allowing the wheel to brush past them. So I'm giving it a tiny, tiny bit of resistance and it's still doing it. So it's not quite as smooth and it's not quite as, uh, I don't know what the word is. I guess smooth is the, is the right word. It's not quite as smooth, but that's because it's an assistant and not a full pilot, like I said before. Again, though, it's able to navigate these quite nicely. Whenever the green turns off, it does mean that it can't see anything and that I need to take full control. So like now I'm actually steering it around all these corners. Around every corner, I do kind of steer it myself anyway when I'm using the system. But I just want to show you that if you don't, if you don't steer, like now, I'm not going to steer now, I'm just gonna let it go straight and that's it steering itself it actually sorts itself out very very well again it can tell that a 40 is coming up there's no sign saying 40 up ahead so it knows that a 40 is coming up and it slows us down really nicely beforehand so rather than seeing the sign and slamming on at the last second it does it really nicely and really comfortably for us so here we go going into the 40 and as we enter the 40, we're doing 41 miles an hour, which is brilliant. A really, really nice thing for it to be able to do. Now, it does struggle with the zigzags. So as you can see, it turns off there for a little bit for the zigzags. It's off again. It does not like the zigzags that we have here on the British roads. But I do understand that. No other country has it, and they are a little bit weird. But you can see through all of this, it's done very well. And it's actually, it's taken a lot of stress away for me. So unlike, for example, the autopilot system on the Tesla, I feel that I do have to baby that, mon I have to monitor it quite a lot. Whereas this, because I'm naturally driving myself, it's just helping me out. And it just allows me to kind of rest and slowly, slightly turn in the direction I think we want to go. And then the car actually does the rest of it for me. And again, I don't have to worry about speeds. I don't have to worry about speeding. I don't have to worry about any of that because the car is doing it all. Whereas that's something on the Tesla that I have to constantly worry about. Again, coming into a 30, the car is slowing down nicely and we enter the 30 at 30 exactly. So here we come with some zigzags. I'll tell you that this will turn off. There you go. See, it turns off and it will turn back on probably now. Oh, no, it hasn't. It's still off. So sometimes it seems to struggle seeing the lines, and sometimes it sees the lines without an issue. Okay, we had a hard break there, and I'm not sure what that was for. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take control here because I don't know what's going on here. So we've got the assist on now. We've got people in front of us, but the car wasn't too interested in them, so it's just going to keep on driving. And we've got a car pulling out now. Let's see how the car reacts. Yeah, quite nicely. And again, it slows down really well behind it. There's no jerking movement. There's no hard brake. It's a very smooth slowdown, which is so, so nice to have. I'm used to a very abrupt and kind of like, uh, 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 feeling kind of brake. Whereas this is so slow and smooth. It's very, it's very Audi, 
I think. It's very, very Audi. Okay, I'm taking control here because it was going to sit behind that car a little bit. So again, the system is on now. And what we're actually coming up to is a mini roundabout. So I don't know if it... Oh, so it doesn't think it's a mini roundabout. You can see that it says that it's an intersection. But I'm not sure what it's going to do at this intersection. I'm just turning right. We've got some red lights here. It can't see the red lights, but they've turned to green anyway. So we're just going to go straight through. Very interesting, though, that that thought it was an intersection. And I'm not sure what it would have suggested for me to do at an intersection different to what it may do at a roundabout. So again here, it was, it was giving us a little corner warning there. I'm not sure why it was giving us a corner warning. But again, the system is on, and I'm just going to rest my hand on the steering wheel. But actually, at the moment, it's not seeing any lines. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now, because we're going through these zigzags. And after the zigzags, it will start picking up the lines. But uh, there we go. It can see them now. And we're coming into a 40, so you can see it starts speeding up. Now, I have got this on eco mode, and if you have it on a different mode, it will actually accelerate a lot faster and a lot harder. And here's got a lovely Tesla Model S on the right. So here, again, it's doing this all itself really nicely. It's going a little bit further over to the left than I would have liked it to do, just because there's no lines on the left. But it doesn't seem actually to be a problem. It's guiding itself around here nicely. And this really is, I've got, to, I've got to say, this is pushing this system to the maximum. This is not how I would use it day to day and it's not how you're meant to use it day to day. But I just want to show that if you push it to the maximum, it's actually very capable and it's very, very confident in itself, except for zigzags because it's going to turn off probably now. Yeah, <laughs> it turned off as soon as, as soon as the zigzags appeared. So again, we're coming into, uh, going into a 60 now and it's slowly speeding us up and you can see let's just watch how quickly it speeds up so there's 10 miles an hour again it's steering all itself it's asking me to take control so i think that's the maximum turning angle that it can do and yeah it's turned off there so when that when that uh, message comes up it seems to turn off i think but you can see it's not actually tracking the lines here. I think it's probably because the road's quite wide and there's no left line. There you go, it's taken back control. And sometimes when it does take back control, it does do a, a slight jerking movement to get you back into where it wants you to be in lane. So I'm just gonna let it do this itself. And you can see it's actually going over the corner, but it's still cornering. Okay, it's turned off now, so I'll take back control. I'm gonna let it do this bit itself again. Yeah, doing that nicely. Again, quite a sharp turn there. So when it needs to, it can actually turn very sharply. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna try and do this corner on its own. It's slowing down, and that's a sharp movement, and there you go, it's turned off again. So yeah, when it tries to do a very sharp movement, uh, it seems to turn off, and when it turns off, you have to take back control. So that, again, that's why you've got to always have your hands on the wheel on this system. There you go, and again. So yeah, it's definitely, when we're going faster, actually, it is still controlling it itself. So the message doesn't stop it taking control. I think it's just saying that it wants you to take a little bit more control. It does also vibrate. The steering wheel vibrates when we get further over to the right-hand side. So, yeah, it's just steering naturally around these corners. And it's working very well. Now I have, okay, we've got a bike just turn up behind us. So I'm intrigued to see if it does anything different for the bike. I'm pretty sure earlier it turned because of the bike behind us, but I'm not sure. It's actually done all of these roads, by the way, completely by itself. It's still doing all this by itself, which is really impressive. Yeah, it's definitely moving over to the left for this bike. It's tucking into the left-hand side really tightly compared to what it did before really hugging this left hand side it is because the biker is on our rear third uh, quarter but he doesn't seem to be going past it's actually turned off now and I, it, I've got full control and as you can see it says that it can sense that the corner is coming up so it starts slowing us down nicely before we get to these corners because the corners are quite tight and then we are coming back up to a roundabout so hopefully it will slow us down again for the roundabout up ahead 
It's still saying corners though on the on the dashboard. And you can see now it's slowing down for the roundabout quite nicely. There's no one coming, so I can just go around the roundabout myself without any problems. Whoa, okay, so it, started, it sped up a little bit there. I think it thought we came out the corner, uh, sorry, the roundabout before we did because it started speeding up halfway around the roundabout, which was a little bit of a surprise. So here you go. So I'm gonna show you the difference of speeding up. So this is it in eco mode from 40. And you can see that it's quite slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the system off and I'm gonna change the drive setting to, uh, let's go to, what should we go to? Let's go to, is that dynamic? There we go, we're gonna go to dynamic. So we've turned it to dynamic and you can see that it's actually turned the boost on up ahead of us. And again, if I go over here, you could see that it gave us a red warning there for the line because you could see us going over it. But as soon as I indicate, it works out fine. So this is a good example. So no system is on and I'm gonna slowly verge over this line and I'm being pushed back into the lane by the car. It's now squared itself back up. So that's without the system on. It still does an assist for you, which is nice. The wheel vibrates and we get that red line. Very, very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the system back on and we're gonna see how quickly it accelerates now we're in dynamic mode. Yeah, definitely quicker than in, in economy. Not masses of difference if I'm being totally honest but definitely quicker than being in economy. But again, you can see that we're, we're kind of sticking to this right-hand side because I guess that's the line that it's very confident of. 